Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 36. In this video, we're going to learn about finding the GCF, otherwise known as the greatest common factor. So hopefully you learned how to find the greatest common factor in pre-algebra. If this is new to you, I'm going to do enough of a review here to where you can catch on very quickly. So I want you to recall that the GCF, again, that's the greatest common factor, or some people like to say the greatest common divisor, this is the largest number that each number of a group is divisible by. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say you had two numbers, let's say 12 and 18. And I said, what's the largest number that each number here, 12 and then 18, would be divisible by? Well, what you would do is you would think about the factors of each number, and then you would find the largest one that's common to both. So for 12, if you think about the factors of 12, you use a factor tree here, you'd have 4 times 3, 3 is prime, 4 is 2 times 2. So I can think about 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. So 12, I'm going to think about as 2 times 2 times 3. And then for 18, if I use a factor tree, I could do 9 times 2, 2 is prime, and then 9 is 3 times 3. 3 is prime. So 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. So what's common to both? Well, if I look here, I have one factor of 2 here, and then a second factor of 2 here. Over here, I only have one factor of 2. So really, if I was to build a list here, kind of a list, I would think about just putting one factor of 2 in, because that's what's common to both. I have 2 here, only 1 here, one is common to both. So I'd put a two there. Then if I kind of move on to kind of the next number that's involved, I have a three here, and then I have one three, two threes here. So one three is common to both. So times three. So my list would contain one two and one three. I'd multiply them together to get six. And so the GCF is the number six, right? And you can see if you took 12 and you divide it by six, you get two. Right? Remember, if we talk about something being divisible by something, then that means it divides evenly, there's no remainder. So 12 divided by 6 is 2, no remainder. 18 divided by 6 is 3, no remainder. So that is the largest number that each number of this group, the 12 and the 18, would be divisible by. All right, so let's go over the official procedure for finding the GCF. And once you kind of get good at this, you don't need to do all the work that I just did, or even the work that you do in this kind of procedure. In most cases, if the numbers that you're working with are small enough, you can pretty much eyeball it and see what the GCF is going to be. So I want you to factor each number completely. So you can do that with a factor tree or you can do it using kind of any method that you've learned. Then you want to list every prime factor that is common to all numbers, all numbers of the group. Okay, so it's got to be common to everything. Then for prime factors that are common to all, we list the least, the least amount of times it appears. So once you've done this, you're just going to multiply the numbers of the list together to form the GCF. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. So we want to find the GCF of 20, 45, and 60. So kind of the best way I've found for students to kind of completely understand this, I just build a little table. So... My table will consist of the prime factors for 20 and 45 and 60. So I'm going to put equals, and then I'll list my prime factors here. So to do that, I'm just going to use a factor tree in each case. So for 20, I can start out by saying 4 times 5. I know 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle that. And then 4 I know I can write as 2 times 2. 2 is prime, so I'll go ahead and circle both of those. So then the next one I have is 45. So 45, and I can start out by saying 9 times 5. And again, 5 is prime, so let's circle that. And then for 9, I would split that up into 3 times 3. 3 is prime, let's go ahead and circle both of those. And then the last one is 60. So for 60, I can do 6 times 10. 6 is 2 times 3, and 2 and 3 are both prime, so let's circle those. And then for 10, we do 5 times 2, and 5 and 2 are both prime, so we'll circle those. All 
All right, so I'm gonna write this in this table in such a way to where it's completely obvious what's common to everything. So for 20, the smallest prime factor is two. So let's go ahead and start out with that. So we have two times two, and then I have times five, but I'm gonna put that way out here. I'll put that way out here. For 45, I don't have any factors of two. So I'm gonna kind of mark those out to show that it's not here, not here. And then I have one, two factors of three. So let's put that there. So times three times three. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this out to show I don't have that here. Right? It's not gonna be common to everything. And then I also have a factor of five in 45. So times five. Now for 60, I have two factors of two. So two times two. I have one factor of three. Okay, but I don't have a second factor of three, so I'm gonna mark that out. And then I have one factor of five, one factor of five. So when we kind of look at this table here, it makes it completely obvious what's gonna be common to everything. So starting out with kind of 20, I have two factors of two, but I don't have any factors of two in 45, even though I have two factors of two in 60, two wouldn't go in the list, right, when I go to build my GCF, because it's not common to everything, okay? Moving on, I don't have any factors of three up here, even though I have two factors of three here and one factor of three here, because there's no factors of three in the prime factorization of 20, it doesn't go on the list either. It's gotta be common to everything. The only number that's common to every prime factorization is five. So I wanna highlight that. There's a five in each prime factorization and there's only one of those. So my GCF here would just be the number five. And go ahead and take each number here and divide it by five. You'll see that you don't get a remainder and you won't be able to find any number that's larger than five that each number of the group is divisible by, right? Five is the largest one. And so that's our greatest common factor or a lot of you will hear this called the greatest common divisor. All right, let's take a look at another. So we wanna find the greatest common factor of 120, 168 and 216. So again, I'm just going to factor each one. So 120, and I'm gonna start out because it says a zero at the end, I know it's divisible by 10, so I'm just gonna go 12 times 10. I'm gonna start out with that. 12, I can do four times three, and three is prime. Four is gonna be two times two, and two is prime. For 10, I'm gonna write that as five times two. Five and two are both prime. All right, so that one's done. So let's do 168 now. So what are two factors of 168 to kind of get started? It's an even number, so I know it's divisible by two, but also I know that the final two digits here, 68, would be divisible by four, so therefore the number is. So what is 168 divided by four? Well, that's gonna be 42. So I know this would be 42 times four to start, and four is easy, that's two times two. Both of those are prime, we'll circle them. For 42, we know we can do seven times six, right? That's easy from watching football, right? Your team scores, you know, six touchdowns with six extra points, they have 42 points. So then seven is a prime number, we'll circle that. And then for six, that is three times two, and both those are prime, so we'll circle those. Okay, so now we want 216. Again, it's an even number, and also 16 is divisible by four, so that means 216 would be. So let's go ahead and start out with 54 times four. 54 times four. Four again is two times two. And two is prime, so we'll circle those. And for 54, I know that's nine times six. And nine, three times three. Three is prime, let's circle those. And for six, three times two. Again, three and two are both prime, so let's circle those. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and make a table. Let's go ahead and make a table, just like we did in the last example. So we're gonna make four lines here. Okay, so we'll have 120, 168, and 216. A little line there. Okay, so the prime factorization for 120. I have two times two times two, two times two times two. And let me kind of look at 168 now. So I have 
2 times 2 times 2. So I have 3 factors of 2 there as well. And then in 216, I have 3 factors of 2 as well. So 2 times 2 times 2. And then kind of going back to 120, I have 1 factor of 3. So 1 factor of 3. In 168, I have 1 factor of 3. In 216, I have 1, 2, 3 factors of 3. So 1, 2, 3. So what I'm going to do to make this obvious, I'm going to mark out what we're missing. Right? Only one factor of 3 is common to everything. Now, moving on, I have a factor of 5 and 120, and then I'm done. So this one's closed out. I'm just going to put a little X next to it. So for 168, I don't have a factor of 5. So let me just kind of notate that with this. And then in 216, I also don't have a factor of 5. And then I could stop here if I wanted to, because once I've closed one of them out, that means anything that appears in the other prime factorizations won't matter because it's not in one of them and it's got to be common to everything. But just for the sake of completeness, in 168, I have a factor of 7. So let me write that. Let me kind of mark this out over here. And in 216... I don't have anything else to put in. So let me just put that, these are closed out as well. Let me kind of scroll down and get a little more room going. All right, so again, it's completely obvious what the list is going to be, right? With the way that I've written this table. And if you're struggling with this kind of concept of the GCF, you might want to take the extra time to kind of spread everything out and look at what's common. So I know that everything has one, two, three factors of two. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. I could write it as 2 times 2 times 2, or I can just put 8. Then times. The next thing that's common to everything is going to be a 3. Right? I have one factor of 3 that's common to everything. Now, here's where students get confused. They see two additional factors of 3 down here. That's not common to everything, so you can't put it in. It's got to be common to everything. So I'm going to put times 3. 5 is not common to everything, and 7 is not common to everything. This is what's common to everything. It's 8 times 3, and that is 24. And so that is your greatest common factor for the numbers 120, 168, and 216. So hopefully those last two examples gave you a general understanding of how to find the greatest common factor. If you need more practice with this, go back into the pre-algebra lessons and take a look at the video that we made on finding the greatest common factor. Again, this is also called finding the greatest common divisor. But kind of moving forward and thinking about how we're going to use this for algebra, in addition to finding the GCF, and again, that's greatest common factor of numbers, we also need to be able to find the GCF when variables are involved. Now, the process for finding the number part is the same. The variable part is a little bit different because you don't need to sit there and make a factor tree. I know you don't need to do that every time for numbers, but when they get kind of big, you really kind of do need to do that. So the variable part just includes any variable that is common to all. The exponent on the variable is the smallest that occurs in the group. So for example, let's look at the greatest common factor for 5x squared, 25x cubed, and 30x to the fifth power. So what am I looking at here? Well, I'm going to think about the number parts. I have a 5, I have a 25, and I have a 30. I don't need to go through and factor that. We all should be able to see at this point that the greatest common factor would be 5. 5 doesn't factor. It's a prime number. 25 is what? It's two factors of 5. It's 5 times 5. And then 30 is going to be 5 times 6, or 5 times 2 times 3. So if I look at these, what's common to everything? It's just a 5. Right? So I can eyeball that and see that the number part here is going to be 5. But what's the variable part? Well, all I do is look at what's common to everything here. I have x squared, I have x cubed, and I have x to the fifth power. What is x squared? It's x times x. What is x cubed? It's x times x times x. What is x to the fifth power? It's x times x times x times x times x. So what's common to everything? Well, since I only have two factors of x here, that's as many factors that's going to be common to everything. I have two here. I have three here, but only two would be in common with this. I have five here, but again, only two would be in common with this. So in other words, all I need to do is look for the smallest exponent 
that appears on that variable that is common to all. The smallest exponent occurs right here. It's a two. So I just use that when I build my GCF. So this is basically just going to be five X squared. That's going to be my greatest common factor. All right, for the greatest common factor of six N M cubed, 24 N squared and 27 N. Again, let's think about the number parts first. So can we eyeball this and do it? I can, maybe you're not at that level yet, but very quickly you will be. I know right away that 27 is only going to have three as a prime factor, right? It's three cubed. This right here is three cubed. For 24, it's divisible by three. 24 divided by three is what? It's eight. This is eight times three. And I could sit there and write it as two cubed times three. But again, I don't need to do that at this point. For six, I know that's two times three. If I look at this, what's going to be common to everything? It's not going to be two because there's no two in the prime factorization of 27. So I could just not think about that. It's only going to be three. This has a factor of three. This has a factor of three. And this has three factors of three. But what's going to be common is only one of those. So the number part is just going to be a three. Okay. Now, when we get to the variable part, again, if I think about this, you first ask a question, is that variable common to everything? So I have an n here, I have an n squared here, and an n here. So the answer to that is yes. Then what's the smallest exponent that occurs in that group? Well, here I have n to the first power, n squared, and n to the first power. So an exponent of one would be the smallest, right? So n to the first power, or just n, would go into the GCF. Now, I have an m cubed here, but I don't have an m here or here. It's got to be common to everything. And so there's not going to be a variable m that's going to go into this. So your GCF is just going to be 3n. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have the greatest common factor of 30xy cubed z, 24x to the fourth y cubed z, 36xy cubed z squared, and 54xy cubed z to the fifth. So what is the GCF? So let's think about the number part first. So we have a 30. Let's think about that. So that's 3 times 10. 10 is 5 times 2. 3 times 5 times 2. 24. Let's think about that as 3 times, all I have is a 2 here. So 3 times 2 would be 6, and then times another 4, and then 36. Let's do, again, all I have is a 2 here. So let's do 2 times 18. 18 would be 9. All I have is a 3 here. So let's do two times three. So that's six. So two times three times six. And I'm breaking this down to where I already know that all I'm going to have is a three times a two that's common to everything, right? So I can already see from these first few that the GCF is going to be a six in terms of the number part, right? Because this guy right here, if you think about it, is really what? It's six times nine. So if I look at this, nothing has a five in the prime factorization other than 30. So you can just mark that out. So all I have here really is just three times two or six. So I'm just looking for that in everything else and it has. It. This has a six, this has a three times two or six, this has three times two or six, and then this has a six. So the GCF, the number part at least, is going to be six. Now what about the variable part? What about the variable part? Well, is X common to everything? I have an X here, here, here and here. So let me put an x in there. Now what's the exponent going to be? Again, you look for the smallest one. So this is the number one, four, one, and one. So it's just going to be to the first power or just x. Now the next variable, we have y cubed. So y cubed, y cubed, y cubed, and y cubed. So everything is y cubed. So the smallest exponent is a three. That's going to go in there. So this is going to be y cubed. And then for the variable z, I have z, z, z squared, and z to the fifth power. The smallest exponent is a one, so I just throw a z in there. And so my greatest common factor is gonna be six x y cubed z. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 44 q to the eighth power, p squared r cubed, 22 q squared r cubed, 33 q cubed r squared, and then 132 qp. Again, let's look at the number part. 
And I think it's obvious, at least to myself, that the GCF for the number part is 11, right? This is 11 times 4, this is 11 times 2, this is 11 times 3, this is 11 times 12. Right? I can eyeball that and see it. And again, over time, you're going to be able to do that as well if you can already. And you can easily see that, okay, this has a 4, that's 2 times 2. This has one factor of 2, but no factors of 2 here. So this isn't going to work, that's not going to work, and nothing else is in these other than 11, so you can just cross these out as well. You're only left with the possibility of 11 for your number part. So let's get rid of this. Let's think about what the variable part would be. So I have Q, 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 and Q. The smallest exponent is on this one, right? This is to the first power. You've got cubed, squared, and to the eighth power. So we're going to go with just Q. Then when I look at the next variable that appears, it's P. So I have P squared, no P here, so you can just stop, right? It doesn't matter that there's a P down here. If it's not common to everything, it does not go in. Now the next variable that appears is R. So R cubed, R cubed, R squared, no R here, not common to everything, doesn't go in. So your GCF, your greatest common factor here, is just going to be 11Q. All right, so let's take a look at 8Z cubed, Y to the 10th, 24Z cubed, 20Z squared X, 12Z squared. So for the number part, for the number part, everything here is divisible by 2. So I kind of think about that in my head. So, okay, this is divisible by 2, this is divisible by 2, so is this, so is this. Everything is also divisible by 4. So I can think about this as 4 times 2, 4 times 6, 4 times 5, and 4 times 3. Now, because if I look at this right here, this is a 5, this is a 3. This is a 2, and this is a 6. So if I think about this, any, everything else have another factor of 2, meaning is it divisible by 8? The answer is no. So I can mark this out, and then basically everything else crumbles, right? I can just mark all these out, because the greatest common factor, the number part, is just going to be a 4, right? Because it's got to be common to everything. So little tricks like that are going to speed up your work dramatically. So the number part is 4. And then for the variable parts, I have z, 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 and z. Smallest exponent is a 2, right? Z cubed, Z cubed, Z squared, Z squared. So Z squared. And then I have a Y to the 10th. No Y. I can stop. I have an X. No X anywhere else. So the GCF here is 4Z squared. 